Hello and welcome to the second session on Tocharian morphology. Um, we are still at stem formation and are now moving on from derivation to compounding. Compounds, at least in Tocharian B, are distinguished from phrases um, via stress. So see the second part of our phonology session. And compounds are often uh, also distinguished from phrases by certain uh, morphological patterns. Um, compounds in Tocharian are right-headed, and usually uh, only the head of the compound is inflected, but like in any other language, there are exceptions to this general rule. Think about German der hohe Priester with the two possible genitives des hohe Priesters and des hohen Priesters. Um, all the major Indo-European compound types that we know and love from the classical languages like Vedic Sanskrit and Homeric Greek are also found in one way or the other in Tocharian. So <clears throat> first we have a look at endocentric subordinative compounds. Uh, subordinative in this context means that there is a syntactic relation of complementation between the head and the non-head of the compound. For noun-noun compounds, this means that the constituents of the compound are linked by an off relation, uh, like English doorknob, so a knob of a door. So let's look at uh, the earth goddess here. Um, this passage is taken from the legend of uh, Kalma Shapada and uh, Satusoma. This is a Jataka, um, a genre uh, concerned with uh, the previous births of uh, the historical Gautama Buddha. Tumensa kenyukte nyemitri peine yisape. Thereupon, this earth goddess uh, will bow uh, close to their feet. And here we have our earth goddess. Um, Kenyukte is indeed a compound, since the simplex of the word for god is nyakte in Tocharian B. And this means that the stress has shifted because it is part of a compound. In this particular case, the stress shifted to the first syllable in accordance with our second amendment of the stress rule in Tocharian B, namely that full vowels attract the stress uh, also in trisyllabic words. Uh, next, we're dealing with an endocentric attributive compound. Attributive means that there is a syntactic relation of attribution or modification between the head and the non-head of the compound. Uh, for now, noun structures, these are compounds where an off relation between the two constituents uh, would not be possible, like English swordfish. So swordfish is not uh, the sword of a fish or the fish of a sword, but is a fish that has sword-like characteristics. <clears throat> Our example uh, is taken from a very fragmentary medical text uh, for which we have plenty uh, in Tocharian, uh, and it is uh, keo piapio. Piapio is flower and keo is cow, so uh, a cow flower. Um, and we have keo piapianze velki, and velki is some kind of part of a plant, and it very likely means cook or whatever, the petals of a cow flower. The classic example of uh, endocentric attributive compounds are, of course, compounds of the adjective noun structure, like English uh, blackboard. And for Tocharian, we find here a uh, croche manje, uh, literally a cold house, so some kind of a refrigerator house. Uh, and this passage here is taken uh, from one of the few non-religious texts, specifically an economic text uh, that deals with some, some sort of accounting. It is from uh, the small uh, Japanese collection of Tocharian uh, called Otani. Uh, that's why you have the siglum uh, Otani uh, here. So, Kroshe Manje Kuryao Wikunte Shak Kaumasa. Bought was a cold house, some kind of refrigerator, uh, in exchange for 226 bolts of silk. Now we look at endocentric subordinative compounds. In compounds of uh, the noun verbal uh, derivative structure, we find an argumental relation. Um, here the verbal head uh, takes uh, the nominal noun head as an argument, like uh, in a transitive verb phrase. These are compounds like English taxi driver, uh, and in Tocharian uh, there are two types uh, that are each attested in both uh, languages, but we'll focus on Tocharian B here. 
So let's look first at the Kurze Rita uh, uh, in the passage taken from the Supriya Nataka, uh, a Buddhist play uh, about a king called uh, Supriya. Lantunyeshe Shechache Kurze Rita Süßwense. So the royal lion is the one who seeks the welfare uh, of the Lord. And we have Kurze Rita here seeking welfare. Um, the simplex of the non-head is Karte. And since we have Kürze, it means that it is part of a compound with the stress having moved likely to the third uh, syllable in accordance with our stress rule. The next example uh, is the other kind of endocentric subordinative compound found in Tukarian. Um, this little commandment here uh, is from the Udana Lankara again, and we have uh, Pelaik Nakshi. Uh, proclaiming uh, the law, the Dharma. So, Pelaik Nakshim Karze Palkas. So, look good at the one who proclaims the law, who proclaims the Dharma, so the Buddha. Um, just a side note here uh, the exocentric equivalents uh, of these types of compounds would, on the one hand, be Indo European uh, root. NV, so noun verb compounds of the uh, Vedic Sanskrit Vrtrahan, slaying the Vrtra type, and on the other hand, uh, VN compounds of the Greek Phereikos or the Italian uh, Portalettere type. Good. Next in our uh, little survey are endocentric coordinative compounds or Dvantvas. Uh, in these, the two uh, constituents of the compound are linked by a coordinating relation, uh, usually uh, conjunctive, of course. Uh, this is the type of English uh, singer-songwriter. Our Tocharian compound here is Niem Kulve, literally name and fame. Uh, the second member of the compound is, uh, of course, cognate with Vedic Sanskrit Shravas fame and Homeric Greek uh, Kleos fame which are usually uh, collocated with Vedic Sanskrit akshitam and Greek aftiton, that means imperishable. And the old Indo-European poetic concept of imperishable fame and potentially name might be reflected uh, in this Tocharian compound here. Our passage here is uh, from the Ambara Chataka, again, uh, um, a Buddhist um, story about uh, a king called Ambara. Omno Nyakepo Chambutvipne ambari lante pontant, aishenchanye kurtseshe niemkulve kliaushate. But there now the good name and fame of King Ambara was heard of in all of uh, Chambutvipa uh, because of his giving away of everything. So far, a kulve is unfortunately only attested in this compound. However, from our accent rules, we know that the simplex would have been uh, Kalve. We're now turning uh, to exocentric compounds and start with the attributive relation of the non-head, uh, either uh, in an adjective noun or a noun-noun uh, structure. Um, we have our uh, compound Larayok here uh, in a passage from the Aranemi Chataka. Uh, a Chataka, again, uh, a genre concerned with the previous lives of the historical Buddha uh, Gautama. Uh, and this is in, involving another king called uh, Aranemi. Um, so here's the passage. Uh, Yelainikte, uh, which is Indra, uh, and also a compound, as you can see. Yelainikte Ramno Larayok Sasven. But like Indra, the Lord is lovely colored. The next exocentric compound type is uh, um, of coordinative uh, flavor. Uh, here the two constituents of the compound are together referring to a complex um, that is equally uh, constitute, uh, constituted by them. Uh, the English example would be mother child, like in mother child uh, activities. Um, our example for this type comes from Tukarian A, uh, where we find Akmal, uh, which literally means uh, eye nose uh, and refers to the face. Um, and this passage is taken from the uh, Maitreya Samiti Nataka. Uh, so, Svarana Sutri Akmal Pashun Luxenchun, 
uh, threads of gold illuminate their face and their breast. Uh, turning to less uh, canonical compound types, um, we look uh, first at a derivational compound. Derivational compounds are compounds that are directly derived from uh, phrases. Um, very often we find derivational compounds based on prepositional phrases, like Homeric Greek phrase en ali, in the ocean, with the derivational compound en alios, acting as uh, either adjective or substantive. Um, in Tocharian, this type is, for example, represented by Tocharian B, uh, Yenesh, and has a direct cognate Tocharian A, Yenesh, uh, which means manifest as an adjective uh, or real, uh, and manifestation or reality as a substantive. Uh, and Yenesh is from the prepositional phrase uh, in the two eyes, um, and this example is taken uh, from a Buddha hymn. So, popi onolmi maitreyense varnae uh, indeed, may all the beings obtain to see the Buddha Lord, uh, beginning with Maitreya, in reality. Um, where we have Yineshne, uh, uh, um, reality, um, in the locative here. Finally, we are looking at uh, iterative compound. Um, this type consists of uh, two constituents uh, that are basically the same. Uh, uh, famous examples from Vedic Sanskrit, for example, uh, include dive dive, meaning daily, every day. And uh, we also have uh, an equivalent of this in Tocharian A, namely kon kon, uh, meaning every day or daily. Our passage here again uh, comes from the Maitreya Samitinataka. Tumushachi kon kon ashanikan metrakun lekatsi kumnish. From there he comes to see the venerable Maitreya every day. Kon kon. So, this was our little survey of uh, compounding into Karen. Thank you for your attention. The next morphology session will treat uh, inflectional morphology of nouns and verbs.